Hey guys, so we are now in the cycle of apologizing for not realizing that we could have done more for African American content creators. So this was on Twitter. I didn't post this. Someone else posted it and it really riled Tolarian Community College up. It says black content creators trying to get into the Tolarian Community College, obviously referencing when there was segregation. And this is a very famous uh, picture. And it went semi-viral. Tolarian Community College did not respond in the way that a lot of people expected him to respond with humanity and saying, you know, I'm going to do better. He went on the defensive, which then after a day, he thought about, probably read some comments and decided, oh, that's not right. I should do better. Uh, same thing with Mero. So it is the same cycle that you see with Refinery29. It is the same cycle you see with a lot of these organizations that promote Black Lives Matter. They change the colors on their website and then someone calls them out. They actually, their former employees and Refinery29 said that they were working there for many years and the CEO couldn't tell the difference between them and a caterer and would keep calling the African-American worker, a caterer, which was very offensive. And another worker said that they, the CEO cannot determine or differentiate different African-American workers. So you have this uh, social media, this very progressive website, Refinery29, promoting women's rights and diversity. The old co-founders are both males, uh, white males, and then, you know, you, you get into the cycle where apologies have to be made. That is currently the place we are now. Merrill made an apology, and he said it is time for self-reflection. He is a white man that gr grew up in America in the 70s and 80s. I need to self-educate to understand these biases so that I can remove them. Two, I sometimes miss larger context to the things I say or do. He's exactly right. Merrill is a cis white male who grew up in the 70s and 80s. Obviously, you know, civil rights movements and things were a lot different back then. Um, you know, the civil rights movement made a lot of progress. Has it been perfect? No. Could it make more progress? Yes. And that's what it's doing today. So in my opinion, you are, we are in the apology cycle. Um, the apology cycle is, hey, you guys are actually kind of not supporting the African American community, even though you say you are. So here is the cycle that every big company goes through, we can just kind of see it in a microscope, which is interesting. I always say that magic lives outside. It lives in a bubble. Uh, recently, I think Rudy made a video about uh, why certain random cards spiked. And it was obvious that he didn't know that the cards got banned for being racist. Um, and that's why they spiked. Which again, obviously it would happen like any Anybody with a, with a brain would tell you, yep, as soon as uh, they ban the cards, especially Invoke, given that it is a rare card, not even on a reserve, it's regar regardless if it's on a reserve list or not, these cards' prices would go up, cleansed, crusade, and so on, even though crusades have been reprinted a million times and a half. Anyone could have told you that would be the direct relationship, but we live in such a bubble that even magic news is not always comprehended or even updated regularly. I make my videos one week in advance, uh, sometimes a week and a half in advance, so things change very drastically. Like These apologies just came out today. Now, do I think to learn community college means good and marrow means good? I've never said Mero is not a good person. I just think he's not competent. And the way that he handled the companions, not great. They sold as much Ikoria as they could. Now there's rumors. I'm just going to spread out this rumor that in 
the collector's edition of Zendikar, only the collector's edition, FYI. There will be the enemy fetch lands as a kind of a... And obviously that will hype the collector's edition, right? That, I mean, it doesn't, I don't need to tell you that. Once, if you put the enemy fetch lands only in the collector's edition of Zendikar, return to return to Zendikar, yeah, it's going to, it's going to sell a bunch of collector's editions. Duh. Um, so Tulane Community College, I have been in a very bad place lately, but that is no excuse. I should have handled myself with more decorum. Angrily blocking names I know without first talking to them and expressing my feelings was wrong. It was also wrong for me not to talk about my lack of black voices on the channel. I will do so more formally in another thread, but I wanted to acknowledge how I should have been more professional and that crap going on in my life should not bleed over to Twitter over a meme. And of course the NPL, I'll just throw the NPL once to uh, not work again, which is another issue I will discuss in a separate video where, I mean, essentially you're paying these guys $200,000 and they don't want to stream, they don't want to do their weekly events, they literally do not want to work, but they still would like to be paid, I guess. So it, it's quite fascinating. It's one of these things that I think is kind of hilarious that the MPL at every single turn wants to play less and less magic, but get paid the same, right? Obviously, no one is uh, requesting a pay um, degrade. So a lot of interesting things are happening in magic that are also happening in real life. And that's the beauty of, and that's why I'm so interested in it. There is a really interesting psychology paper, if you're a psychology major, to be said about this. That how does the magic community in a, a very niche community, uh, one of the best economic papers, or actually one of the best medical papers, was on how War Warcraft had a virus that would spread and it would you know spread and and how the basically a pandemic, a full fledged black plague pandemic would affect people and and people started they incubated in the small villages that were spread out and very like distant places they want to communicate with each other and that actually happened in real time because they didn't fix the virus that fast and the people who were infected just died and they respawn and they would get reinfected how other generations would learn and they all just kind of it's a beautifully written paper i mean maybe the papers the language is not that great it's just some gamer wrote a paper the data is beautiful though and then for Econ, you had uh, some game that you bought spaceships and there was currency and some monopoly or any currency-based game where the currency can be sold for real money. It's interesting to see how economies, monopolies, vertical monopolies, horizontal monopolies, different uh, guilds and different um, things and how real life money has, you know, uh, class of clans would be a good example of this where, hey, you have to help your friend out. Let me buy this $10 super pack or something like So it's all very fascinating. And here we have a real life example of how social justice looks. What does social justice look like? And let, I mean, let me be completely frank with you. It's interesting. I mean, it's interesting because the same cycle that applies outside to a company as big as Refinery29 applies to Wizard of Coast. Wizard of Coast is not immune from this when it is immune from other things like gambling laws, loot boxes, uh, gambling for children, devaluing products, banning products, right? So if EA did some of the things that Wizard of Coast did, people would be up in arms. But because it's Wizard of Coast, oh, well, it, they did it for the game. Imagine uh, EA, if you play FIFA soccer, there's some very expensive uh, players that you can buy. You know, or you, you would buy the, you, essentially it's a loot crate system. And then imagine that they get nerfed. Like just their whole team gets nerfed. And that's what happened to companions. Or imagine a player that you spent a lot of money on to be on your team is now got uh, all the FIFAs, the NFL. I mean, you have these chase cards, right? And they're chased for a reason, like Oko. And then suddenly the uh, unit is gone, but you spent a lot of money pulling for the unit. And, but people get really upset at EA for this. 
know, micro transgression, micro uh, buys and purchases, but they don't really understand that Wizard Coast is doing identically the same thing. So Wizard of the Coast has gotten a pass for a lot of things that EA or a regular company would not get a pass for. And it's interesting that they're not getting a pass for this. Mero had to come and apologize. Tolarian Community College was called out and he was obliterated. Um, that's why he got defensive. It got so bad that he was just blocking people who were patrons. Or I guess they claim they were Patreon. So who really knows at this point in time. It's really bad right now. And if you do want to make a difference. If, if you do support Black Lives Matter. And you think this is a good movement. Then you can donate money. You can hire. You can interview more African Americans. And you know hire them. Not like the NFL with the Rooney Rule. right, Where you have to interview them. But then you don't have to hire. Which defeats the whole purpose of you know interviewing. You got to get like a real job or something, right? Like you got to give them jobs, jobs. Um, so in my opinion, this is pretty uh, on par to what I expected from Wizards of, of the Coast, from Merrill to learn to learn community college. Um, as you can see at the very end, we'll have another topic to discuss, which is essentially uh, Wizards of the Coast taking quotes out of context <laughs> i mean this is a this is a bad company guys this is a bad company uh some of its behaviors and marketing are just not ethical in my opinion but hey you know what it's not for me but it's for them go for it bye guys